Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and this is episode number 150. We have our resident cellular healing specialist, Dr. Daniel Pampa, on the line, and today we welcome special guest, Dr. Howie Glasser. We're super excited to have Dr. Glasser on the show. We have a really exciting topic today, and uh, before we jump into the subject matter, let me tell you a little bit more about Dr. Howie. Howard Glasser is the founder of the Children's Success Foundation and creator of the Nurtured Heart Approach, which has been used in hundreds of thousands of homes and classrooms around the world. He's the author of Transforming the Difficult Child, currently the top-selling book on the topic of ADHD and otherwise challenging children, The Inner Wealth Initiative, one of the leading books on school interventions, You Are Oprah, I love that title, Igniting the Fire of Greatness, a book that outlines ways to apply the nurtured heart approach to oneself, and All Children Flourishing, a book that describes the approach's use with all children, difficult or not. Four of his eight books are in the top 1% of all books on Amazon.com. Howard has been featured as a guest on CNN and is a consultant for 48 Hours. He currently teaches the Nurtured Heart Approach through live presentations worldwide. He has consulted for numerous psychiatric, judicial, and educational programs. Although he has done extensive doctoral work in the fields of clinical psychology and educational leadership, he feels his own years as a difficult child contributed to, the, to most of his understanding of the needs of challenging children and to the success of his approach, which is based on aligning the energies of relationship. Howard has been called one of the most influential living persons working to prevent children from relying on psychiatric medications. He also um, works he also he works also to support many children in developing the inner strength to resist addictive substances. Awesome, amazing bio, and welcome, Dr. Glass, to Cellular Healing TV. Thank you, Meredith. Yeah, hey, Doc. Listen, I, I have to credit my wife for you being here today uh, because she read an article, um, you know, that you had out there somewhere, and she started reading it to me about ADHD children and how they're put on all these unnecessary medications. And that, that's been a heart of ours. I was a dyslexic kid who no doubt would have been medicated for some reason. Um, two of my children are absolutely ADD, including my wife. <laughs> so you can imagine our house, uh, as well as my son, Simon, who's ADD, dyslexic, OCD. So he always, you know, he always jokes and says, just go ahead and just give me one more label and, and watch what I can do with that too, you know? <laughs> uh, you know That's like I, you have a fun household. Oh, it's a fun it household. It be 220. <laughs> I said, I'm going to write the book on how to live with ADD humans, okay? <laughs> so she started reading me things that you had wrote, you know, and, and, and my heart is so on the subject of just drugging children. You know, I always say there's a time and a place for a medication, but I don't know the percentage. But I would say by far the majority of these uh, medications that they're drugging children with are not just unnecessary, but m massively dangerous. I, I see the effects, what I do and you know, what we do on the show a day in, day out. And matter of fact, I'll take it even a step further. You know, I believe that most ADD children, it's simply their personality. They're brilliant. Uh, you know, I, I was this child who couldn't read until sixth grade, and you know, I had to work my way around who I thought I was, my insecurities that developed through it. And, you know, only to realize, oh my gosh, you know, there's, there's a brain in here that not only works, but, you know, has a brilliance behind it. You know, my, my son, Simon, absolutely had to get through the same thing. And you and I actually discussed it on the phone. And you said, try this next time. And I had just read the introduction, you know, to this wonderful book. Now I've read the whole book. So, you know, I... I I, after you gave me those suggestions, I read this book. My, my son is already a different person. So with that said, our viewers are going to say, okay, what did you do? Because I'm telling you, it worked in the matter of a day or two. I'm not kidding. My wife saw the difference. Everyone in the house, the brothers and sisters saw the difference. And what does this have to do with health and cellular healing? Because what you talk about in this book is transferring energy from the heart of a parent to the heart of the child. Mm -hmm. That energy transfer, I can tell you that I was thought I was feeding energy in the correct place. I am a teacher. I am a, you know, that person who inspires 
And every time he misbehaved, I used that doc as my platform to lecture him. What you taught me was I was feeding the negative fire. I was giving him $100 bills to basically misbehave, if you will, or create more conflict in the house. <laughs> mm -hmm. You showed me how to switch that energy. So thank you at the top of the show. And let's tell our viewers, you know, this is the heart of the health of our children. I'm telling you, perhaps one of the most important shows did all year. I mean that because I, I saw what it did to my children. And I see what's happening in schools. This is a sick generation and emotional sickness is part of it. So, all right, doc, with that said, my what goodness. You, what does this I, energy transfer? You know, uh, uh, listening to you uh, speak it in, in real time with such, um, such magnitude in your voice is, is exciting to me because, uh, you know, I could actually feel, uh, you know, um, feel the connection between you and your son, you know, in a, and, and, and maybe the words that I wanted to say as you were saying that are, are your, you, you, in relation to your audience, in relation to your work on cellular healing, is it, it, there is a cellular magnetism that, that gets upside down, that inadvertently, by way of a loving parent and a child who's um, desiring, deeply desiring, craving that loving connection uh, and, and just merely watching us at the level as my, um, my friend who uh, teaches in uh, Anne-Marie Chesson, who teaches at Dr. Weil's program, says that the, uh, uh, at the level of re uh, at reality at the level of energy, um, the... Um, kids are, are reading energy like Braille. Mm -hmm. and, and when something goes awry, we, you know, we, we say we're busy and we are busy, but we're never too busy for a problem. And when we show up, we're showing up with our full throttle desire to teach a lesson, to, to right the ship, to help this child come to see the light. And so we're merely speaking our truth to that child and we're giving the gift of us, the energetic, mag uh, magnetic, compelling gift of us simply at the wrong moment in time. Yeah. We're choosing to give the gift when things are going wrong as opposed to very meticulously limiting that gift when things are going wrong, having a way out, having a way of saying, oops, broke a rule, consequence, oops, your foot's on the line, reset. Um, but then very meticulously choosing to give the gift of us when things are going right. That's, yeah. that, it's like save your soul for the good stuff. Save your soul is, 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 is something I, you know, a mystical statement I never really grew up with or understood, but I heard it in my, as background music in my neighborhood. And, and you know, yeah, we, sh we need to save our soul for the good stuff. Don't give it away. You have turned entire schools around. The, the schools that are using this principle um, literally have credited you to completely turning the whole ship, which is... Uh, you know, it, it, I watched it work within days. Matter of fact, I, I have to tell this one story. You know, so listen, you know, inadvertently you said it. I, I, was, I was failing. I was. I'm going to call it what it was. It, it, but I did it with all love. I literally, I, I was, I'm so good at inspiring and teaching lessons in it. But I was just doing it at the wrong time. I was doing it when the behavior was bad. And according to your book, it's like giving your child $100 bills to continue that process. And that, that's exactly what was happening. So the simple shift that I made was just not giving it the energy. Every time those things happen, I would give a very short thing and I would say, we're going to talk, we'll talk more about this when you calm down. So I literally just stopped feeding that fire. Right. And then when I, every time I saw him do something good, I would say, you know what, Simon, I, I am just astonished 
it, that the the successes that you're doing here. I, I was, you know, you are making decisions every day. I'm seeing it of someone who is successful, and he just would light up. Mm. And I just kept doing that. And then here's an incident that you gave in your book because some parents out there are going to say, "Well, wait a minute." Can't is what my kid's doing anything good to praise it. That's not true. And you pointed out in your book. So the ADD child, right? We tell Simon, Simon, you know, could you take that stuff downstairs? Yes, yes, yes. And he has all good intentions, but it doesn't get that done. Right. Then the second time. Then the third time. Now my wife and I are going, didn't we tell you to get it downstairs? Like, yeah, and then it starts, right? It's like, oh my God, it drives me nuts because I right. am one of the people I can remember. You know. Well, and he he studied you, Dan. Oh, no doubt. He, 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 you know, we, we advertise what gets our goat. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. Oh, God, that's a whole other subject. I could tell you every way he knows how to turn my buttons on. But anyway, so this time, Marilee says, that's my wife, she says, Simon, take those cars downstairs. And I'm sitting there watching this scenario. And this is day one of me reading this book, right? And I'm sitting there going, and I know he's not going to remember, right? It's like, okay, yeah, well, then. so Simon gets up, and I know he was going to the refrigerator. I, I knew where he was going, and I knew he was going to forget. So he gets up, and I said, Simon, that's awesome. Like, so you, you listen to mom just like that. Man, that's success. So what did he do? Of course, instead of heading to the refrigerator, he heads over and takes his cars downstairs. Boom! It was like he had no intention to do it, but he was like, okay, I just got praise for that. So, of course, I'm going to do that. And, and now it's like, you know, I've repeated that same strategy many times. So, you know, yeah, what, you know it, 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 Dr. Pompa, it's not just, it's not just praise. What you're doing is, uh, because I could hear into what you're saying is you are giving a lecture, but you're choosing to give the lecture at a moment in time where he could hear it. And, mm -hmm. and what you're tying into by, by being conscious of the magnet, magnetic energy you carry and 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 the real gift you want to do is is you're lighting up his runway of seeing the beauty in him you're you're showing him who he really is not who he thought he was right. and so you're not just praising him which is good job or thank you or way yeah. to go <laughs> which is empty and it, it's like a it's like it's like eating the the packaging on food you buy it it has it has no nutritious nutrition to it you're you're eating the uh, you, you're you're serving up the the nutrition of of uh very carefully carefully crafting uh encouragement and appreciation by saying here's the here's the incredible choice you just made you could have gone to the refrigerator, but you rerouted to go, uh, you know, I saw you look like you were thinking of going to the refrigerator, but you made a choice to get done what you needed to get done. That shows me your responsibility. It shows me your thoughtfulness. It shows me how much you care about this family, how much you care about our relationship. And, and so what you're doing is not manipulative. It's simply, um, it, it, it's, it's, Shining a light on the on the uh, great characteristics, and I could prove this to you. Had he thumbed his nose at you and gone to the refrigerator anyway, how not great would that be? Had he been disrespectful like that, how not great would it be? Could have been extremely not great. Could have could have got could could have got you know you you really uh, over the ropes. And and so therefore, how great is it that he didn't do those not great things? So so we need to tell our kids about their greatness because yeah. we're so willing to tell them about their non greatness. Yeah. Yeah. And just looking for those opportunities, it's easier than people think, you know, to give the inspire, inspirational when they do the right things. It's, the, it's, it's like fruit hanging on a tree. It's staring us in the face. It's always there, yeah. but we didn't know yeah. it was there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He went down like just after a couple of days of doing this and all of a sudden, you know, the shower before bed argument and the brushing your teeth that normally would go down, whether he forgot, whether he didn't want to do it. It was like, so Marilee said, well, did you shower? He's like, I did it. I, I did it, Mom. Well, did you brush your teeth? She, he said, no, I did that too. I'm like, oh my, I said to her, I was like, I, he's, he's a different kid. 
I said, who, who is it? I mean, this kid is making successful choices day it's, in, day out. It, She's like, yeah, it, right? it, 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 it's almost as if he was always that kid dying to show his stuff, but he was getting, frankly, he was getting paid more to do the opposite. Yeah. He, he literally would just, you know, the banter of when he wasn't doing something, mm -hmm. he got to the point where he was no doubt just feeding from it you know, very typical, especially of a child like this, that they will just feed from the negative and we just keep feeding that negative. And yet it's like such small things. And in your book, you give so many ways of doing this, like rightly. I mean, you know, meaning that it's not just good job. It's not just that shallow praise. You give example after example of how to really inspire someone, not just good job, but even beyond that, linking it to success linking it right. to achievement, linking it to a person who's going to change the world, make a difference. And he loves that. And he's just, he's just well, sucking it up. We love it too. And, and let, so let me give you a compliment. You know, I, uh, there are people who uh, could read my book and go, eh, and, and like it not register. You, uh, uh, so what I gather from what you're saying is you're, you're a, 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 a very loving uh, dad who has deeply yearned to have a positive impact on your son and I want to appreciate I, I am going to appreciate you for the kindness the thoughtfulness the consideration uh, and love you're showing and it, and it reveals to me how much you care and uh, how deeply you care and and how meaningful this is to you to have figured out a way to inspire your son. I'm not there where you live. I'm not in your household. It's you who's doing it, and it's your wife who's doing it. And uh, I just want to applaud you for that. And 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 to me, that speaks of the greatness of how deeply you care and how loving you are as a dad. Yeah, thank you. And it means a lot to me. So, with my my wife would tell you that the one area feel like I had been failing with Simon and you know and it's like and, and it wasn't intentional I, I was just putting the energy into the wrong thing and, yeah um, I mean he it was just feeding a bonfire um, when you say hey look there is two fires unfortunately I was just feeding the wrong one now I made the shift and I'm, I'm feeding the right one I yeah, wanted to and, and the nice one is the uh, the fire that doesn't get fed dies on its own no no yeah. absolutely yeah it, and you know his love language you know, is affirmation. It is. So maybe, you know, that's one of the reasons it works so quickly. I, I mean, honestly, he just, he just, you know, blossom mm. and still it. Well, I, I, I really get that you're doing this in a very powerful way. And, and I love that you picked up on the, um, it's, it's funny you picked up a book, um, the book, that came your way somehow it is a, a book that's five or six years old. And I happen to be, it happens to be one of the books I speak about schools. And, and I really am longing for the moment where we not only have one school like Tolson that, um, that has low, uh, that has uh, low to no usage of kids on medication, but uh, where this whole school districts, this whole geographic areas, where it, it can't be dismissed as a uh, you know, you wow. know, some anomaly. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it's. I love your introduction. It it shows it. You know, you you among many uh, a growing number of doctors really know uh, deeply and and uh, with a knowledge base of how toxic these medications are to the organs of the body and and I look forward to the day when we don't have kids on medication. Well, this is the sickest generation, I believe, in the history of man, honestly, uh, for multiple reasons, one of which is the over-medication, uh, from antibiotic use to psychotropic drugs. Uh, if we would just be able to educate people on these two things, these two topics, we would save a generation. We really would. You know, you have the answer, I, I believe you know, to really how, you know, even to communicate with this kid, with this generation. And, you know, on this show, we talk a lot about, you know, emotional traumas and how that affects the health throughout their life. In the traumas, 
that we create in our children unknowingly just by feeding this fire. I mean, honestly, I, it, it's, it really is remarkable, which will end up manifesting in physical illness later. You know, when we look at these, you know, people that are very sick later, it's physical, emotional, and chemical trauma. So many of the emotional traumas were put there by parents with, you know, loving parents. Loving parents. Meaning, absolutely. That just simply didn't understand this simple message. You have a story. I need to tell your story. And then, you know, because you didn't just, you know, you were Simon. I was Simon. <laughs> you know, you were, yeah, Simon you were says. my son. I actually won a Simon Says. I, w I was on television once as a kid on, a, on some show that had a Simon Says program, and I won. And probably because I was so ADHD. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. So tell us your story. I mean, you, you I, for pain purpose, man. That's all. That's you no, know, I, I, my story is, is, is similar. My parents weren't um, educated as you are but I uh, but they were loving parents and and they I'm sure they wanted me to be you know um, to live the dream and and do well they had a you know a, uh, their first child my brother is four years older he j just thrived you know did you know was valedictorian of everything he's ever looked at and and um, and and I I wasn't wired that way you know and I I, I was maybe by way of my intensity, my extra added intensity, my life force, which of course, as you know, isn't a crime. It's, no. it's a great thing, um, but nobody knew how to handle me. So, yeah. so when, instead of, you know, when I pushed the limits, instead of people unplugging like you did and saying reset essentially to me and, uh, and then turning back to me and, and and, and energizing me appreciatively when things are going well, they uh, they threw themselves full barrel into, you know, uh, haranguing me, reprimanding me, you know, every every punishment anybody knew to mankind at that moment in time. Um, uh, they gave it. That's what they thought they needed to do. They thought if if they if they lecture me perfectly or they harangue me or threaten me or if they get ever more drastic and punitive i'll wake up and smell the coffee and yeah, yeah, I thought that. and it made me it made me a devotee of of living life through negativity yeah. and, and i was good at it and i wouldn't so it, i wouldn't give an inch i was like simon i would not give an inch yes Yep, yep. So how did you discover this? So, I mean, here you are. I mean, obviously, you know, you didn't discover as a child. You discovered as an adult. Tell us that part of the story. Oh, goodness. Um, you know, I would say I, 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 when it, it didn't really make sense to me. Um, um, I felt maybe I'll back up a little. There were a couple of, uh, moments in time where I had experiences that led up to um, when I came back to the field and I started working with families at the age of 40. So um, in my 30s, I lived in Boulder for a while and, and I had a, a dear friend, uh, um, I think we met at the, you know, at a, uh, like the gym or something like that, and we'd go play tennis. And uh, and one day he wanted me to meet his family, his four teenage sons, and and he told me about you know his uh, his he and his wife were psychotherapists. And I get to their home, and they're talking to their kids, not in the way I write about in my book, but in a very loving way. And they go out of their way to tell these kids about the good things they see in them. And I, it was as if my world just changed in a moment. It, it, was, it was the first time, believe it or not, in those 30 years that I ever saw a family talk purposefully in that manner to their children. I still had no explanation for it. Right. But, but all I could tell you is that I couldn't stop the flow of tears. And I couldn't explain why I was so moved. So fast forward about 
um, 10 years. I had studied clinical psychology. Um, I had dropped out just before, uh, you know, I, I, I was working on my dissertation and I, I'm going to take a year off and live my childhood dream of being a, a cabinet maker. So mm. I, um, one year turned into 15 years. And, uh, and when I finally came back, uh, instead of working with outpatient schizophrenics, which I did as a, you know, a young professional, I came back and I got a job working with families. And I was, I was uh, simple. I had studied with some incredible people. I knew all the, all the work I needed to know. And, you know, I'd, I'd come in unknowingly with this open mind. I think the beauty of having been away from the field for 15 years was that I, I, I had the ability to tell myself the truth. I, I wasn't so overwhelmingly loyal to method A, B, C, or D that I couldn't question it. So when I'd go in and work with a family and I'd use method A, philosophy, theory, practice A, and I saw it wasn't working or helping these people, I simply went on to theory, practice, belief B. C, D, E, F, G. I was blowing through these approaches. And then I, I, I try and get innovative. I try to read more. And, and, and finally, I'm going to sound like Seinfeld now. It was, I had nothing. It yeah. was just me. Eventually, it was me and the family. And, and what I began, and I don't know if it was, uh, I love to jokingly say this. I don't know if it was flashbacks from Woodstock, but, uh, uh, eventually, when I wasn't masking everything and I was just purely being with the family, what I began to see was that uh, it was almost as if I could see the energy. And um, I, I noticed there were times when a family would say something to a child where the child would lean in. And it was almost like, oh, something beautiful just happened here. And the family doesn't know it, and the child doesn't know it. And then there were times where the family would say something that sounded so good on paper. It sounded so kind and loving, but all of a sudden the child would unhinge and, and, and take a step back. And something energetic was going on. And I start watching for this, and I start trying to explain it. And that's where some of my analogies would come from. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, and I'd go, Oh, kids are reading us this way, like the Toys R Us analogy or the video game analogy. You know, um, w I, I would say that as an attempt to um, explain to a family, here's what I'm getting at. Here's what I'd like you to try. And, and I, I would notice in families, like, it, it, like, I, if I said that these metaphors well enough, it's almost like they'd sit up an inch taller in their turn to go, oh my God, that makes total sense. Yeah, Just well, let's use, that. <clears throat> Let, let's use that video game analogy because that, that made sense to me as well. Well, I'd, I'd be happy to tell your listeners the analogy. I mean, um, yeah. you know, I'm not a fan of video games. I mean, hopefully someday there'll be some excellent ones. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but... I've noticed how kids just get enraptured by these video games. All you know, they don't just they don't play to lose, and they don't just play. They want to go level, level, level of greatness. They want to be the best in the world. They, they, these games are compelling to them. And and when I started uh, dialing in, what what is it that video games? What magic? What spell does it have? I started to see that there was a um, the the games have a, a way of explaining reality that's captivating the kids. It, you know, it, it, it has incentives that are clear and predictable in a way that contrasts normal incentives. It has uh, limits and boundaries that make sense to a child in a way that contradicts normal boundaries and limits. Right, so there's, there's reward, there's instant reward, there's points, there's energy yes. given. And there's instant death, which you kind of want to talk about how that little check in time out, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'll, I'll get to that. So, so uh, you know, I'll be the kid for a second. Here I am playing. I think the structure of these games um, is compelling to kids and makes them feel alive and makes them 
like go, oh, the world makes sense. So I'll be the kid. Here I am playing one of these games, and at the moment I'm going towards the goals, getting the goals, and uh, um, while I'm doing that, the game is in my face, confronting me with my success energetically. Score, 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 bells and whistles. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, everything's going great, but in the next second, if I cross the line, the game doesn't go, oh, I'll look the other way, or oh, I'll, let me yell at him. Um, the game just delivers a consequence. It gives me complete freedom to break the rules. And, and we adults look at the, these rule violations and the consequence, and we go, oh, those are massive, destructive consequences, heads blowing up, bombs bursting, you know, blood spurting. But the truth is, who's out of the game for two seconds? You know, the game just unplugs usage for two seconds. And uh, for the child, it feels like an eternity. And, and, and when the child comes back in, they're not just coming back in, they're coming back ever more motivated to go level, level, level. You know, I'm not gonna break that rule again. Mm -hmm. They come in ever more um, inspired to, to be their best. And to me, that's very replicable. That's transferable. Yeah, so, I mean, it brings up the second point, right? So, you know, yeah, we, we want to give our energy the child doing the right thing. We want to not feed that energy. We want to feed the energy here. That's step one. Step two is there are rules. And that's what the video game analogy brings right. up. You have rules. There's consequences. Right. But you have a different approach there. So, you know, describe that approach a little more detail. Yeah, no, it, to, me it's, it, to me, it's really uh, like, like unplugging um, uh, the gift of us. Um, it, 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 it's a momentary, to me, the reason video games work so great is because game in, game on is so powerful that game off, game out is, it, 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 it doesn't have to be drastic or punitive. It's just merely, it's just merely a, the game, you're paused. You're out of, you're out of the game. So, so if a child, if I'm, if, if I'm interacting with a child and the child rolls their eyes, I'll say reset, I'll unplug me. I'm not gonna lecture them. I'm not gonna say anything other than reset. I'm unplugging me for a couple of seconds. I turn back, they're not, they're not rolling their eyes now. They may be thinking about it. They may look upset at me, and I'll come back and they'll say, "Look, I see you are still upset, but that's okay. You're not rolling your eyes." And to me, that's an incredible decision you're making, and it's great control, it's great wisdom, it's great kindness that you are um, that you are being respectful in that way because you could be rolling your eyes still, and you stopped, and that's all what I care about. Well, yeah, and so next time the eye rolling will not be there. Now talk about timeout because you have a different approach there. You know what I'm saying? So, oops, sorry about that. My son's looking for his phone and it's going off. <laughs> um, oh, sorry about that. It's sitting on my desk. You know, you have a different approach, you know, the, the, with the timeout. So talk about some of the consequences. Like you're talking about unplugging in that very moment, but how do you also, uh, you know, give a consequence? Well, I'd say for the vast majority of all wrongdoings that uh, that that we would typically get on uh, you know upset about um, uh, I really prefer the consequence of of what I'm referring to as a reset um, uh, where it, it's you don't the child doesn't have to go anywhere, stand in a corner, go to the room, think about it. There's no, there's no explanation. I don't have to say reset because you're talking unkindly to your sister. I don't have to say reset because you didn't do what I asked you to do. I'm just gonna simply minimize it and I'm gonna minimize the energy, the, this energy. I'm gonna minimize, um, I, I don't want to inadvertently give energy to the problem. So um, if so a kid's tantruming, I'll say reset. I'll turn away. The reset is you lose me. I still love you. I'm, I'm still unconditionally loving. It, it's just that I, um, <clears throat> um, I, I, have, I, I, I am unplugged right now. 
Um, I'll explain, I'll give you a great explanation. There was a family I work with where they had an 18 month old, they knew my work because they're five year old and, uh, uh, but now they had an 18 month old who, um, had, had no words. He, uh, all he had was, uh, you know, a, a, I like jokingly say 50 shades of whining. He, he was world-class whining. He had zero vocabulary. He could whine to the nth degree. And these were very loving parents, spiritually loving parents, intelligent parents. And they, they couldn't, so when, when this kid was upset, he'd go wah, and they would pick him up and they had a language of their own. And, and, and so they wanted it to stop and they were asking for my help. And I said, when he's not whining, make a big deal. Give him credit for the right. choice he's making not to whine. When he whines, so you need a rule, no whining, along with whatever other rules you need. When he whines, I want you to simply say, reset, turn away. And when he's done whining, even for a second, turn back and, and congratulate him for the choice he's making. Give, you're giving him credit for whining. Give him credit for not whining. Yeah. And, right. and, and so I, they, this was hard for them because they were so, they cared so deeply about being perceived as loving. And I said, so I was, sit, I was in their kitchen and they had this beautiful toaster on the counter. And I said, imagine this is the best toaster ever. You know, it, it intuits when you're gonna wake up and intuits, it bakes your bread, it, it intuits what kind of toast you want that day and how you want it buttered. It makes your coffee, it's the best toaster ever. When it's unplugged, it's still the best toaster ever, it just simply doesn't work. So you're the toaster. You just choose to unplug you and, and all of a sudden it made sense to them. And um, I, I wanted, to let them know affirmingly that I know they're loving. They're still loving their child when they're unplugged. They're simply not giving the loving at that moment. And, and, and then the, the connection resumes as soon as the whining stops, you plug back in and say, you know, here's, here's what I, just like you did with your son. Simon and telling him here, here's what I'm, here's what I'm excited about. I need to yeah. tell you. Yeah. Absolutely. So to me, to me, people, people shake their heads and go, what do you mean? You're not punishing him. You're not taking things away. You're not taking away screen time or, or, you know, uh, or yelling at him. Yes, I am saying that I'm saying you could be infinitely more powerful than yelling, infinitely more powerful than scolding or lecturing by simply not saying anything at the moment of the incident, by simply yeah. saying reset, turn away, then turn back and give the, give the best lecture ever about what he's now doing right. Because that's yeah. what you wanted in the first place. Yeah, you're lecturing on what's doing right. You're not lecturing on the wrong. I right. hope people hear that because it's, it's an amazing transition of power. It really is. It's and a transition of power, you're right. Absolutely. And, and not only does the other not work, I, you know, I'm a consistent person. I mean, I've done all the creative discipline. I've done all the lecture. I've done, I've done all the things that, I mean, the room for this much. I've done it all. And I can tell you, it not only doesn't work, it, it makes it worse. It I'm makes it worse. Yeah. It's no. a, like a drop of gas on a, 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 on a, a fire is a drop of gas on fire. And, and why give a drop? Why give it? That's where I'm playing hardball. Is I'm not going to give the gift of me to that. Yeah, yeah. Stop, and, stop. But what I am going to give the gift of me to is the great fire of your greatness. That's what I'm going to give a lot of gas to. Yeah. So transition the energy to that, the greatness, the success, as opposed to the bad behavior. It's a different way of being powerful. As you're saying, I, I, I love what you just said. It's a transition of power. It, yeah. it, it's a very different way. We come from a heritage, from ancestry, that believes power comes in a certain packaging. And, yeah. and I'm saying power actually really comes in a different manner. And, and kids don't have their awakening by way of drastic punitive consequences. Kids awaken to who they really are as great as great people 
And that's what you're wow. doing for Simon now. You're awakening him to his greatness. Yeah, no, no doubt. It's worked. It's worked already, uh, you know, Howard. So thank you. And, and Meredith, I, I know you have some questions that you have. And Meredith doesn't have children yet, but she sees the problem. <laughs> so <laughs> fire away. <laughs> hi, Meredith. Hi, hi, hi. I've just been so enjoying the, the wealth of information you are, and thanks for sharing everything. And thank I'm just kind of wondering, too, from, from a different perspective. So I think you kind of mentioned that a lot of these strategies are applicable to adults as well and to ourselves. So how do we translate some of these strategies into our adult relationships and or to kind of improve <laughs> our own communication skills as well? Well, uh, you know, there's there's two aspects to that, Mara. There's there's one where we're interacting with other a adults, and and the very same things that Dr. Pompas and I have talked about really uh, is what I try and hold true to in my interactions with adults. You know, um, we we could lose sight of the fact that it's just merely, it, it's just another form of relationship, but truly there are people who come along and, and we, wind, we wind up having relationship through negativity. And um, if we wanna change that, we have to be very purposeful. We can't wait for that to happen. You know, we have to go, no, I'm not gonna give my energy to that. Here's what I am gonna give my energy to. You know, I'm not saying we have to necessarily say reset to that other adult, but I certainly we I have at times saying, I'm just gonna reset this conversation. And then, thank you, now I wanna, and, and I'm not waiting 10 minutes. I'll come right back and say, thank you for resetting. And uh, let's, uh, here's what I really think is gonna serve us to talk about now. And I wanna honor you for being willing to change gears. And um, it's, it's amazing what we could accomplish by way of shining a light on, uh, on somebody's true nature um, and, and kind of seeing through to not the surface, but beyond the surface of who they really are as, you know, most people, um, uh, in fact, probably all people have very loving hearts. They may not operate on, from that. And I think the biggest, in terms of adult relationships, I'd say the greatest uh, frontier is our relationship with ourselves. And that's the book you referred to, You Are Oprah. I've since written another one called uh, Igniting Greatness. Um, uh, that came out two years ago. Uh, I, I really uh, write uh, uh, very uh, in a focused way about uh, my own journey of using the this work on myself. You know, I fifteen years ago I thought I was a very positive person. You know, I you know I'm teaching nurtured heart approach. I am uh, changing the lives of a lot of kids and families, and, and I had. Um, I had a personal crisis which just shined a big light on the fact that, you know, my default setting really when push came to shove was still primarily negative. You know, I could have an, I could have an hours long conversation with myself about how a poor choice or, or some fear based thing or, or some other worry or such thing. And, um, you know, it was so evident in that moment that I decided, you know, I'm going to change that. I don't want that default setting. I'm going to change it to a, uh, a new default setting. And I decided I'm not going to give the gift of me to the negativity within me. Wow. And I'm, I'm going to purposefully have those same conversations you had with Simon. Now, I'm going to have that same conversation with myself over all the, all the uh, uplifting and inspiring and positive qualities I see in myself. And, and, and through that process, 10 years hence, um, I started using the word greatness because I want me being, me being that push the limits, Simon kind of kid, you know, the Howie, difficult child, I wanted, uh, the, the upside of that is I want to see how far I could go. So I started accusing myself of, of various qualities of greatness. I started energizing that within myself. So I started to, I believe, have a very big um, uh, uh, impact on, on my own psychic, psychological 
health and well-being in terms of believing in myself and maybe even changing that default setting. Our thoughts become who we are. Our thoughts yes. literally change our DNA. Epigenetically, the DNA produces different proteins. And after a while, the proteins are who we are. It's dopamine. It's serotonin. It's our flesh. It's mm -hmm. who we become. So literally, with our thoughts, we have the ability to become a new person. So yes. by feeding us, our, you know, our own self, mm -hmm. these types of thoughts of greatness, success, you made a choice, a decision to be a different person, and you just started downloading that new programming into your subconscious. So imagine what we're doing to our children when we're telling them. We give them the opportunity to think of themselves as that successful person, change their DNA, yes. change their person, and ultimately change who they are. You know, I got it. And there's one more thing. I can't wait to hear your medical response to this is, is when I see negativity coming my way, when I encounter my own negativity, when I'm conscious enough, I go, I reset myself. And when I'm really aware, I like to take the energy. I don't want to go, oh, yuck, worry, yuck, get rid of it or fear or anger. I, what I do is I embrace it. I, lo I lovingly embrace it and I take the energy and I use it, that very energy to promote greatness. Wow. Um, so so I'm, I'm, I, it, it feels like I'm doing some alchemy there, but I don't know what you would call it in a medical conversion, but uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm very warrior-like in how I go about this. Yeah, well, no, it's just, it's a transfer of energy. I mean, energy is neither created or destroyed. You're right. just transferring the energy. Negative emotions have great energy. Yes. So why can't you take that great, any, you know, if energy is the key even to healing. Exactly. You know, then why can't you take something that has great energy and apply it in a positive yeah. way? Why let it run through our fingers and throw it away and go, yuck? Why right. not, why not take thing. it and, and just convert it? Yeah, convert the energy and say, wow, I'm going to utilize that great energy because you know what? It's like what I've had to do with my story, Howie. You know, That's I've had to story. tell myself, look, it's like all of this and how and who. I wouldn't be able to be who I am if it wasn't for all of this. That's a transfer of energy. You know, yeah. you know these, we look at these things and say, woe is me, horrific, how bad it was, you know, we in the court system for three years and all, I mean, all of this stuff, you know, but it's like, again, it's, it's massive negative energy that I can create to such positive because exactly. it is exactly what I needed for greatness, Howie. It is. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. And I get that you're leading a life of greatness. I no, get that no. you are helping so many people through the work you're doing and through, and through your knowledge and what you're sharing out to your community of uh, like-minded doctors. I had a conversation with a gentleman named Gilles Lamarche today. Actually, he interviewed me. He is the vice president of Life College. And he said something profound. He said, with every principle, there's a promise. So behind every principle, there's a promise. And, you know, he said, Dan, I, you, know, you live a principled life, so do I. And that's why we hang on to every promise that goes with principle. You know, you're a 3 percent. You know, you made a choice to be different. You made a choice to not be negative. You made a choice to change the world, make a difference in children, and now you are. You know, I mean, it sounds trite that we can just make a simple choice, a decision, but that's what three percenters do. And I always say three percenters are the people who change the world, change lives, heal from cancer, the unexplainable. You know, it's a choice. Be a three percenter. You know, transfer that energy, man. You know, it's like I'm a three percenter in parenting now. <laughs> so beautiful absolutely beautiful awesome yeah. i love it well in closing since we're at the top of the hour amazing just that whole conversation was just awesome there too the three percenters love it but uh so in closing dr glasser if there's some parents who are listening or watching and are just really struggling with difficult children right now what would you say to them um i would say it's very simple there's there's three stands for um if you will that i believe I've been talking about 
but I haven't said it this way. The first stand is I'm not going to give any of me to negativity. Um, uh, uh, oh. So, uh, so absolutely no. I'm not. Go I refuse to give um, connection, relationship, energy to negativity. The second stand is I refuse not to give myself fully, appreciatively, resolutely um, to the qualities I want to recognize in my child. I am going to make it my business to see through like x-ray vision into the beauty of this child and see appreciatively the qualities that I want to grow, that I want to feed, that I want to nurture. Um, so I'm going to see respectfulness. I'm going to see responsibility i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna see the the uh, thoughtfulness and consideration collaboration my child does and i'm gonna honor them with words with of appreciation and the and the third stand is here's the rules and here's the consequences and and that's very simple that's what we've talked about is if if a line is broken a little bit i'm not going to give any warnings i'm not going to give any hoopla i'm not going to give uh um, I, I'm just unceremoniously going to say reset, turn away. Uh, for I'm going to be in the truth of the moment. So if the truth is this child looks like he's going to yell and scream and, and, and cuss, but he hasn't, I'm going to say, I'm going to marvel at him for choosing not to. Even if he's this close to doing it, the truth is he didn't do it. But if he in the next second puts his foot on the toe on the line, like in sports, I'm going to say, I'm going to blow the whistle, say reset, I'm going to turn me away. And as soon as that's not happening anymore, I'm going to be back in the truth of the moment. And I'm going to say, beautiful, that was hard to do. I know you're mad at me. I know you're mad at mom. I know you didn't get what you wanted, but look at you, you using your wisdom, your power, your control, your, to make a thoughtful choice. And, and um, I appreciate that. It's not an easy choice, but you're doing it. So, uh, uh, that's so that's a, it's simple. It's a different kind of consequence. No, but agree. it's a very honest consequence. It's really being in the moment. Well, I hope everyone gets your books. I hope they order your books. Thank you. Um, no, because I, this is what we can, this is part of how we're going to change a generation. I, uh, I, I'm with you. Uh, I'm a fellow, I'll be a fellow three percenter. I'm in. Now, Absolutely. I applaud your work. I applaud what you're doing, and thank you for having me as a guest. Yeah, appreciate thank you so much, Holly. Yeah, Say hi to Simon. Yeah, yeah. And how, so how can our viewers find out more about you, Dr. Howie? If you go to childrenssuccessfoundation.com, you'll see all, all uh, lots of stuff about my work and resources and uh, a free e-course and there's a bookstore and all the books that are relevant are there. Wonderful. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Thank yes. you, Dr. Pompa. Thank you, Dr. Glasser, for today's show. Super inspiring. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great yeah. rest of your day. Absolutely. Right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next week. Yeah, absolutely. Bye-bye.